Today on The Way of Ramen, I'm attempting to make a truly iconic ramen dish. Created by the god of ramen himself, Kazuo Yamagishi-san, this is the original tsukimen, Higashi Ikibukuro Taishouken's morisoba. And this might be the best thing I've ever made on the channel so far. So before we get into cooking, let's learn a little bit about the person behind this dish and what makes it so special. To say Kazuo Yamagishi-san is a legendary figure in the history of Japanese ramen would be a true understatement. Belovedly known as the god of ramen by his fans, apprentices, and fellow ramen chefs, Yamagishi-san was Japan's first true ramen celebrity chef. He was a man known for many things. He was an extremely kind person to everyone he met, he served huge portions of ramen, he had enormous dedication to his loved ones, to his shop, and to his craft. He is probably best known for creating a style of ramen he called morisoba, which eventually evolved into the genre of ramen called tsukemen. Originally devised as a way to make use of strained noodles that escaped the strainers while making his standard ramen, his tokusei morisoba eventually became the star attraction of his shop, which led to a daily line of customers who would patiently wait hours to get in. The news of a tiny ramen shop in Tokyo with these huge daily lines spread throughout Japan in the 1960s and led many from across the country to travel to Tokyo in search of this shop, creating the first ramen mecca and cementing Yamagishi-san's status in the history of ramen. Though Yamagishi-san retired and closed his shop in 2007 and later passed away in 2015, over 100 apprentices who he trained at Taishoken continue to carry on the flavor of his soups in their own Taishoken shops today, but many will say nobody can make it like Yamagishi-san once did. Today we're going to be making a home version of Yamagishi-san's legendary morisoba with the help of my buddy Eric Benz, the chef owner of Cafe Mochiko in Cincinnati, Ohio. Eric is an extremely talented chef who did stints at Thomas Keller's The French Laundry as well as Momotaro in Chicago. He also loves ramen and serves some of the best ramen in the United States at Mochiko, which he opened this year with his partner Elaine. I originally challenged Eric to come up with a recipe that uses easier to find ingredients than most home chefs would have a pretty good shot at pulling off at home. But with his love for legendary Japanese ramen chefs, he was the one who actually suggested that we do a home version of Yamagishi-san's morisoba tsukimen. While the ingredients for the real taishoken soup are floating around the internet, Eric's recipe instead focuses on the feel of the dish while keeping the recipe accessible and achievable for most home cooks. And I was blown away by what Eric came up with with such humble ingredients. And I honestly think that this might be one of the best things I've made on the channel so far. So let's get right into it. We're gonna start with the tare for this bowl because this tare is a multi-day, multi-step process. So I would recommend getting it started at least a day before you make your soup because we're gonna be actually finishing it during the soup cooking process. Into a pot, get 750 grams of standard kikoman shoyu, 10 grams of kombu, 15 grams of dried shiitake mushrooms, 12 grams of sea salt, and 15 grams of brown sugar. Let this steep at room temperature for at least three to four hours overnight if you want to maximize the umami. Then after steeping, get this onto a stove and very slowly heat this up to 67 degrees Celsius. It should take a minimum of 30 minutes to come up to 67 degrees. I went for an hour. And as soon as it hits 67 degrees, turn off the heat and add 50 grams of midden and 20 grams of apple cider vinegar. Let this cool as is uncovered overnight. And we'll be straining this when we finish the tare while we're making the soup. Next, I made the sweet vinegar or amazu that we'll be using in the final bowl assembly. In a small pot, combine 130 grams of rice vinegar, 17 grams of salt, and 70 grams of sugar. Warm this on low heat just to dissolve the sugar and salt and then turn off the heat and drop in a tiny piece of dried kombu. Let this cool down then transfer it into a container to store and leave the kombu in there. The noodles for this dish are extremely important as the fresh flavor of the wheat and the noodles themselves are a big part of the experience. Luckily, these noodles are very high hydration and come together fairly easily. So if you want to give noodle making a shot, this is a great first recipe to use. I have a couple of videos on the channel on the techniques I use to make noodles, so please check those out because I might gloss over some steps here. I'm also making half the recipe because I made a test batch before filming, so if you plan on serving this ramen to people, double everything I say here. I'm gonna start off by making the kansui, which is the alkaline solution which makes ramen noodles ramen noodles. I start off by weighing 7 grams of baked baking soda and 7.5 grams of salt. Then I'm gonna beat an egg and then weigh out 10 grams of whole egg. And finally, I'm gonna weigh out 200 grams of water. Add everything into your water and then stir to combine. Make sure everything is fully dissolved and then set this on the side. Your kansui is ready to go. Next, I'm gonna weigh out my flour. We're gonna be using a blend of all-purpose flour and cake flour for a lower protein mix. So 300 grams of AP flour and 200 grams of cake flour into a large mixing bowl. Whisk this together and then slowly drizzle in your kansui a little at a time. Stir in the kansui, then repeat this process until all of the kansui is poured into your flour. Then use your hands to fully incorporate everything together into a loose dough. It should look something like this and have a consistency similar to wet sand. Then transfer this loose dough into a Ziploc bag and let this rest for 30 minutes. 
After 30 minutes, step on the bag to knead the dough into a flat sheet. It should look like this and you can use a rolling pin to even out the sheet after flattening it. Then let the dough rest again for another 30 minutes. After the second rest, you can cut the dough to fit your pasta machine and then roll it down. Do at least one lamination of the dough either by combining two dough sheets like I did or by folding the dough sheet in half and then smashing it together. Roll the laminated sheet out to a thickness of about 1.5 millimeters or the five setting on the Atlas pasta machine. Be sure to dust the noodle sheet with potato starch or cornstarch and let the rolled out sheet rest one last time for another 30 minutes before cutting it into noodles. Finally, cut your noodles using the spaghetti cutter attachment and you can use these noodles the same day or rest them in the fridge overnight. I probably wouldn't rest it longer than a day because you're gonna lose that fresh wheat taste which is what you're after. So use it within a day or so. For the soup, Eric kept this recipe very simple. The original Taishoken soup uses pork femur and trotters as well as chicken, but we're using chicken here as the main flavor and we're gonna use pork shoulder for the pork element as well as for the chashu. Eric recommends six pounds of chicken backs, but if you can't get them, you can use a whole chicken with the breast removed or even six pounds of chicken quarters. I'm using two whole chickens and breaking them down and removing the chicken breast to make other things. You don't need to break down the chicken super cleanly since it's just gonna be used for stock. So don't worry if you can't do this perfectly, but if you need a tutorial on how to break down a chicken, you can check out my buddy Yakitori Guy's channel. He is who I learned from and you can also learn how to make some great authentic yakitori. Once you have the chickens broken down, you wanna remove the guts from the chicken backs and then lightly rinse the bones. Then put all the bones into a large pot, saving the chicken skin on the side for now and then cover with four to five liters of water. Turn the stove on to high and bring the water to a boil to get the scum out of the chicken. And once the scum is floating at the top and clumped together, skim it off. Be sure to stir the chickens a little bit to get any hidden scum to come up. And once you get all of the scum skimmed off, wipe off any scum that's stuck to the side of the pot with a paper towel and then add in your rinsed chicken skin. I used Kezo's technique here with a lid slightly cracked open. Because the soup has a shorter cook time, you wanna keep this soup pretty hot, hotter than normal, maybe around 97 degrees Celsius if you can. It shouldn't be boiling, but you should be seeing tiny bubbles come up to the surface regularly. Check the time you started the simmer because we're gonna be using that to time other steps in the process. While the soup is cooking, we can start to prep the chashu. For the chashu, we're gonna be using pork shoulder this time, not pork belly. We're gonna be using two and a half pounds, three pounds, maybe actually more, maybe up to five pounds if you want more chashu and can fit it into the soup. The only pork shoulder I could get was cut the wrong way into steaks, but if you can find one that has the grain running lengthwise, you wanna use that. What you wanna do is bind the pork with butcher's twine. According to Eric, this helps lock in the moisture and keep the chashu soft and juicy. I did my best with the pieces that I had, but hopefully you can get a better cut. For the aromatics, we're not using much. If you watch Taishokin videos, you'll often see a lot of stuff floating around in there, but we're going very simple here. Green onion tops, ginger peeled and sliced, and some garlic cloves that are cut in half, and that's it. The official measurement Eric gave me was a handful, so measure out a handful of these aromatics. Check your clock and about one and a half to two hours in, you can drop in the bound pork and the aromatics. And about three hours in, skim off the fat that's collected at the top of your soup. This will be your aroma oil, a mix of chicken and pork fat infused with the aromatics in the soup. Continue to let your soup cook and in about four and a half hours, check the pork shoulder by poking it with a chopstick. If you can easily poke a chopstick through the pork, it's soft enough and ready to be seasoned. Strain out the tare that you made the day before and take your pork shoulder out of the soup and put it into a large Ziploc bag. Pour your tare into the bag with the pork and then get all the air out of the bag using a bowl of cold water. Chill down the pork and tare in an ice bath or cold water for one hour. At five hours of total soup cook time, taste it to check its flavor. It should be done or close to being done at this point and should have a nice chickeny flavor with a hint of pork. If you like how your soup tastes, turn off the heat and stick 25 grams of kombu in and let that steep with the residual carryover heat for 45 minutes. After an hour of soaking in the tare, pull the pork out and transfer it into a separate Ziploc bag or a container to store. Don't let the pork sit in the tare for longer than an hour because it's gonna make your tare less salty and your pork too salty if you let it sit in there. So get your pork out of there, strain it out, and your tare for your soup is finally done. While you have your kombu steeping, you can make the final component for the bowl, the gyofun fish powder. We're gonna do a very simple version of this and just grind up some hana katsu katsubushi. And basically what you're gonna do is just take some katsubushi and then grind it up into a fine powder. After 45 minutes of steeping the kombu in the soup, strain out your soup and you're finally done and ready to eat. I highly recommend you eat this the day you make the soup because it's just such a fantastic fresh tasting soup. To serve, boil 200 grams of noodles for two to three minutes and you wanna overcook these noodles because you're gonna be shocking them with cold water which will firm them up again. If you taste them while they're cooking, they should be pretty dang soft when they're hot. Put the cooked noodles into cold water and then rinse off all of the starch. Try not to lose 50 grams of noodles in the sink like I did here, and then transfer the noodles into a bowl. You don't need to strain off the extra water for this style because they'll probably evaporate as it's kind of like just sitting there. Transfer about 200 mils of soup into a smaller pot to heat up. And while your soup is heating up, you want to add these things in this order into a bowl. 20 mils of your aroma oil, 30 mils of tare, 
about a quarter teaspoon to half a teaspoon of the sweet vinegar, a few shakes of Ichimi Togarashi Japanese chili powder, a spoon of your Gyofun fish powder, and some chopped green onions. And finally, when your soup is hot, you're gonna pour in 180 milliliters of your soup. Drop a piece of chashu that's cut in half and a hard boiled egg. No soft boiled eggs for this one. And there you have my attempt at Eric Benz's home version of Higashi Ikibukuro Taishouken's Tokuse Morisoba Tsukimen. Oh, and I forgot, you put a little piece of nori at the top of the soup as well. To eat it, you take a little bit of your noodles, dip them into the soup, and then slurp away. And the soup should taste pretty salty if you eat it just alone, but if you eat it like this, it perfectly seasons every single bite. Usually I pick apart the ramen that I make and say what's bad about it and what I don't like, but this bowl honestly was phenomenal. Quite possibly the best thing I've made on the channel so far, maybe the best thing I've made in my entire life. Now it could be just because I didn't eat anything the whole day while I was cooking and I was just completely starving by the time I ate it, but I think what makes this experience great is you have this fantastic tasting fresh noodle paired with a soup that's hitting every single flavor sensation you can experience. When you eat it, your taste buds are tasting salty, sweet, sour, spicy, bitter, umami, all perfectly balanced and in the perfect ratios. And I think a huge amount of credit goes to both Yamagishi-san for designing this dish to hit all of these flavor notes, and also to Eric for being able to nail down not only the flavors of the dish, but the ratios of these components to bring about the spirit and feeling of Taisho Ken completely on his own. Truly amazing what real chefs can do, and this is why I don't even like to pretend that I know what I'm doing. If you're anywhere near Cincinnati, Ohio, it's well worth the time to make the trip out to Cafe Mochiko and eat Eric's ramen. Many of my ramen nerd friends have eaten his stuff and said it rivals the best bowls they've eaten in Japan. You can follow Eric on Instagram at Eric underscore Benz and Cafe Mochiko at Mochiko Cincy. And just for a little fun for this video, last year Eric invented a challenge for this Tsukimen called the Taishoken Omori Challenge. The Omori serving at noodles at Taishoken is 640 grams and that's pre-cooked by the way so it weighs even more after you cook it. It looks something like this and I was actually one of the first people he issued the challenge to and I actually chickened out and I didn't do it because I can't eat that much noodles. But if you are up to the challenge and want to defend my honor for me, the first three people who make this recipe and eat 640 grams of noodles, tag me on Instagram, prove that you did it, and I'll send you a way of ramen apron. Just a little fun, don't kill yourself guys for an apron, I'll do more giveaways in the future, but if you like to eat a lot of noodles anyway, give this one a shot, have at it. Anyways, thank you so much Eric for the recipe, I would never have been able to come up with this on my own, and thank all of you for watching and for all the support. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.